welcome to my sacred space. My name is Lauren Victoria. I am a mental health psychotherapist, a spiritual life coach, and certified sound and vibration healer. In this video, I'm going to cover the basics of shadow work, understanding the shadow, where it came from, and how we can use it to integrate into our full selves. If I was to ask, who are you? How would you respond? identifiers like your race or nationality, zodiac sign, social role, accomplishments that you've achieved. There is a collective humanistic tendency to give positive or at least neutral responses about yourself. And this is because our conscious mind likes to present our best self to people. We want to put our best foot forward. Think of the dating representative, if you will. The mind then filters out the less attractive or negative traits and qualities into the subconscious, aka the shadow. Shadow work comes from the term the shadow self, coined by Carl Jung, a psychologist of the 20th century. In Jung's theory, the shadow represents the part of the personality that the conscious mind or the ego does not want to see. It doesn't accept this part of itself. The mind or the ego then works to essentially erase the shadow's existence. And it does this in a myriad of usually maladaptive, unhealthy behaviors. Patterns like projection, victimization, harsh criticism, perfectionism, intolerance, arrogance, anger, the list goes on and on. In my spiritual and professional work, I have found that the shadow is pretty much synonymous with shame. Shame is this very powerful force of humiliation and embarrassment that comes from sensing that you are dishonorable, improper, or immoral. One of the earliest stories that I learned regarding shame was with the Christian story of Adam and Eve. God punishes Adam and Eve by the shame of knowing their nakedness. While they were in the garden before, oblivious to this exposure, the awareness and the shame that came from it caused them to want to cover themselves and hide. So it's here that I see this connection between shadow and shame. It is this tendency to withdraw and isolate from vulnerability and exposure to others. And what makes the shadow even more powerful is that it is not only hidden from others, but effectively hidden from our own psyche. The shadow hides so well because it is part of the subconscious. That is the part of the psyche that is not consciously aware, but still influences our thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. This starts very early. When we're young, we are dependent on our parents or our caregivers for survival. So we learn to exaggerate what is accepted in that environment, and we start to filter out or suppress that which is not. Essentially, the subconscious is learning performative behavior even at a very early age. For example, a child raised in a household where they are taught that expressing their emotions is a sign of weakness may learn to avoid or bury everything that they're feeling. They start to bottle things up until one day it explodes. Though starting very early, the shadow is dynamic and grows and shifts with life experiences. Friendships, romantic relationships, bullies, and even the media can have a significant impact on how we learn to hide or integrate our shadow. The more you repress your shadow, the bigger and the stronger it becomes. The stronger the shadow self becomes, the more triggering and more volatile it can be. Think about a child who has learned to repress their emotions for the first two decades of their life. A chronically repressed shadow is extremely volatile. That's because the ego or the conscious mind starts to build fantasies and stories that it must believe to understand its shadowless self. Significant fragmentation or mental and emotional damage can be done if that is challenged without the proper support and safety. If an inferiority is within our conscious, one always has a chance to correct it. Furthermore, it is constantly in contact with other interests so that it is continually subjected to modifications. But if it is repressed and isolated from consciousness, 
it never gets corrected. How Young believed that we as individuals all have the capacity to do wonderful and horrible things. To prevent the darkest potentials, we have to familiarize ourselves with that side. When we identify and understand those pieces of ourselves, we're more likely to be able to cope with them and express them in healthy ways. It's kind of against human nature to do this because we don't want to see ourselves as bad people. The shadow work is the work of removing those labels, clearing out the judgment of acceptable and unacceptable, removing the shame that has been internalized. Shadow work is the act of fully integrating yourself, both light or conscious and shadow, subconscious. That means the acceptable and unconventional about you, the pretty and the ugly, your strengths and vulnerabilities, your controlled and chaotic sides. There are a myriad of ways to indulge in these practices. Meditation, journaling, rituals and ceremonies. I highly recommend going with someone who is licensed or certified in some type of healing practice and therapy or life coaching. I am a spiritual therapist and also offer spiritual life coaching. If you are looking for a one-on-one -on -one spiritual consultation for shadow work or just becoming your best self, drop down into the description box below and schedule an appointment call with me. So start to integrate your shadow self. If you have rage, go to a rage room and break some shit. If you like a taboo, join a kink community. If you're a perfectionist, learn a new skill. There are plenty of methods to start to enjoy yourself and I hope this video has inspired you to try. Again, my name is Laura Victoria. I make spirituality and mental health content. Subscribe for more and if you like this video, drop down in the comments and let me know what you got.